is it true that COVID cannot be driven extinct due to animal reservoirs, which is a <clears throat> excuse me, a reference to this finding that came out sometime this week um, that some crazy huge number, like 30 to 40% yeah. of white-tailed deer in the U.S. Um, supposedly. Well, it was from certain sample populations. But, was, but they extrapolated to the U.S., did they not? Uh, there's definitely an implication, but, um, but let's just have say. Have tested positive for? For antibodies. There it is. Yeah. Well, so l let's let's talk about this. First yeah. of all, there is a lot of panic over the fact that lots of creatures have tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. I wouldn't worry about most of them. Okay, so we've had in, we've had it transmitted to big cats. We've had it transmitted to both cats and dogs. Um, Domestic cats and dogs. We've had it transmitted to. Um, apes in the zoo. Basically, zoo animals and domesticated creatures have caught it. But there is a big difference between catching it and being able to transmit it to another creature, like within your species, and then another difference between that and being able to transmit it back to a human, which that last step is actually the most likely in some sense. If it caught it from a human... I would say so, yes. Pretty, but yeah. that said, mm -hmm. we really Not only... Not guaranteed. No, right. We really only yeah. have two species in which we have seen something that looks like human disease, right? The ability to transmit it readily, et cetera. And those are minks and ferrets, right. right? And one instance, literally a single individual mink that has been found in the wild with the disease, I believe with the virus itself, not just the antibodies, though I'm not 100% sure of that. Mm -hmm. But in any case- Otherwise one, it's farms right. and pet ferrets. It's farms and the, the mink, mink farms that was- and pet ferrets. And the mink that was found with it was near a farm. So it's not an independent thing. So is SARS-CoV-2 out there in some way in animal reservoirs that prevents us from driving it extinct. Yeah. Maybe. Right? We got minks and ferrets, which we can deal with because they're in farms. Um, we've got lots of individual cases where an animal has picked it up and it hasn't circulated in a population. Those aren't serious yet. They could certainly become serious, but they yep. aren't. Um, the and then this continues to evolve. Right. The and virus then, continues to evolve and manifest differently. Right. And I should point out that the mink ferret thing is very likely related to the very probable lab leak, mm -hmm. right? And the point is ferrets would likely have been a study subject in gain-of-function research. It may have been passaged through ferrets because their ACE2 receptor is very much like ours. So in any case. Yes. And minks and ferrets are close relatives. Yes. And they're, so the ACE2 receptors of the uh, mustelids or minks mustelids mm -hmm. yeah of, of that whole that clade of mammals um, is all very similar to humans that's why they are model organisms used in things like unit function experiments yep and we should be looking at other closely related critters uh, skunks are a possibility but um, they're not mustelids are they they're just outside so yeah. it's, it's an arbitrary distinction they used to be mustelids and now yeah. they've been moved but they haven't gotten any it's the stripes away. isn't it they're excluded on basis of the stripes. I, I couldn't say. No, it's not. It's not, it's not. That's not how systemists work. But okay, let's get back to the deer. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about this study on the deer, I thought, oh, this is the worst conceivable news because this really does look like a widespread epidemic within white-tailed deer. In which case, there's there is no chance of eradicating the virus. I from wouldn't. The I wouldn't say that, but I would say it makes the it job. It just got much harder. harder. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, so I, my first thought was worst possible news. My second thought was, I'm not even sure I believe that this is true. And I thought maybe this was the result of a coronavirus that circulates in deer that has resulted in antibodies that are triggering the test, but it's not really a new thing. Okay. Nope. The study was better than that. It definitely tested samples from after the COVID pandemic and before the COVID pandemic, and with a couple of exceptions that are likely to be false positives, the triggering is all post-pandemic. Mm, okay. So it does look like something. Now, is the antibody um, test detecting animals that are or have been infected and have not had disease? There's still something strange about this. Did mm -hmm. Was there uh, a non-symptomatic or so lightly symptomatic pandemic in deer that got a foothold so quickly from human infection something is not entirely seems not entirely likely about this but possible mm -hmm. uh, is it possible the antibodies are reacting to something covid like in the environment without the infection that seems unlikely that so many would trigger a test so anyway let's just say 
Worst case scenario is that this actually represents SARS-CoV-2 infecting populations of deer and that the deer are giving it to each other enough that we can detect it in a large fraction. It was something like 40% of samples in the Michigan yeah. population. Um, <clears throat> does that mean we're stuck with SARS-CoV-2 forever? Uh, it could mean that. On the other hand, I would say we are stuck with rabies, right? Yeah. But we have rabies well under control in the Western world, right? Yeah, it is both well under control and for those of us who do work that puts us at risk of at high risk of exposure, there are vaccines. There are vaccines yeah. and we have a program for dealing with the human interface with animals that can carry rabies. Yeah. And so anyway, every so often somebody dies of rabies, right? But mm -hmm. if every so often somebody died of COVID, um, that would be a very tiny harm compared to a uncontrolled circulating uh, pandemic. So, yeah. so I do think we need to start drawing a cleaner line between can we drive it absolutely extinct, which would be wonderful. I'm not convinced that if it's in white-tailed deer circulating that it's beyond the possibility, mm -hmm. right? In fact, uh, there are a lot of ways that could go. But, uh, but anyway, even even if we found if we drive if we drove it out of the human population and it remained in the deer population, there are various things. There are various levels of commitment that we could put to the problem and address it. Um, but even if we didn't, if the point was, well, we're kind of stuck with it because it's permanently in the deer mm -hmm. and we decide we can't do anything about that, um, then the answer is, well, maybe this could be so well managed like rabies that it is effectively not in the human population, right? That the interactions with it are mm -hmm. so rare that it's effectively not, uh, not circulating. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Yeah. Because rabies remains, um, much more of a problem for, for some other species than it does for us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I would say, look, I still I still have seen nothing that says it can't be driven extinct. extinct. If the deer study... But it sounds like you, you're still agnostic, but you're leaning towards that deer study seems to likely be... Uh, my first thought was it's going to be flawed and the flaw will be easy to spot. And that's not what I saw. Yeah. The deer so, study looks well done. Okay. Um, that's, that's so more yeah. likely, but there's still something odd about the story. So this thing yeah. came to North America in early 2020, must have leapt to deer very quickly, evolved enough capacity to move between them. And without now a causing higher disease. percentage of deer than humans have been exposed. Right. It, it, <clears throat> I still will not be surprised if there's something wrong yeah. here, but I don't, I, there is, there is nothing in the paper that indicates a poorly done study. Fair enough.